So today I'm going to tell you what minimalism is. Um, I'll give you a brief history of where minimalism came from and also tell you about who I think should care about minimalist design. Then I'll tell you about how to get started implementing uh, minimalist design into some of your own projects um, in order to create easier to use websites. So let's get started. Um, minimalist design is a mindset and a style. The idea behind minimalism is to be mindful about the elements that we include on our websites, whether it's a design element or a piece of functionality. And so the idea is to reduce them to just the most necessary elements. So minimalism is often quite simple in design. Um, stylistically, it uses a lot of white space, clean and bold typography, um, few colors and limited UI elements. And though it's simple in design, it's not necessarily simple to execute. Um, because, because the goal is to reduce the clutter and really only have the most essential elements, we end up not having as many elements to, um, to deal with. And so executing a minimalist design requires a solid understanding of basic design principles. Without these principles, um, our design may just look incomplete. So because of the goal of minimalism is to be mindful of what we choose to include on our websites, we really need to have a good understanding of who our users are, as well as the purpose of the project, so that we can make those choices wisely. So where did it come from? Minimalist design emerged in the late 50s and stuck around through the 60s and early 70s. The phrase, less is more, which I imagine many of us have heard before, um, has come to really summarize the minimalist design movement um, as it means to leave the most important elements and that we get more impact by using fewer elements with purpose than we do with a whole lot of elements arbitrarily. So minimalism was a rejection of abstract expressionism. Um, and abstract expressionism used a really dramatic and expressive style. And so minimalism was interested in being, just getting to the point, um, focusing on content and Uh, and a simple design. So we, we can see minimalism has influenced a wide range of mediums. Um, for architecture, minimalism meant focusing on simplicity and using modern materials such as glass and steel. Um, we see it in fine art as well. Um, Minimalism in fine art was about challenging the expectations of what an image can and should uh, represent. We see it in sculpture too. Um, the point in, with sculpture was to reduce the form down to the most geometric uh, form. 
we see it in literature too. Um, with literature, it was characterized by really superficial descriptions and the use of few words as in this poem by William Carlos Williams. We see it in interior design as well. And um, in interior design, the focus is on using lighting and space to create a peaceful environment. So how this relates to web design, <laughs> um, it's a rejection of just needlessly complex designs and functionality. So you might think of like Adobe Flash um, landing pages or introduction screens, um, blinking text and graphics, um, applications that are just packed with really obscure functionality. So who should care about this? Minimalism is for anyone who strives to be more purposeful. Designers may want to consider minimalism because our jobs are to solve problems in the best interest of others. Um, our jobs are not only to make something look nice, but to solve a real problem and we can better solve that problem with some of the minimalist um, mindset. Developers may want to consider a minimalist approach because when taking a minimalist approach to developing a website, developers may be a better able to focus their energy on the most important aspects and then deliver them more effectively. Marketing people may want to consider minimalism because especially when considering visitors really only spend about 15 seconds on a website, um, taking an approach to crafting our websites that only leaves the content as a focus may have a greater impact on the success of a marketing strategy. Our clients and other website owners may want to consider minimalism because it may help actively drive their brands forward and clearly communicate the main messages uh, to their audience. For our clients' clients and the end user, um, minimalism may have a positive impact on just the experience of using our websites when they can get in there, do what they need to do, and get on with their lives. So it's going to look different to everyone and for every project because not every client or every project has the same purpose or needs the same functionality, it's going to end up looking different. So where do we start? Um, taking a minimalist approach starts before even the design process begins. Um, if we start with the mindset that every element should have a purpose, um, we really should start by asking ourselves and our clients some really important questions. As designers, we shouldn't ask first what, excuse me, not how should it look, but what should it do and what is the goal? So start a conversation. We should start by asking ourselves and our clients some important questions to better understand what it is 
we're designing. So we can ask what the main marketing message is. Um, who is the primary user or users? What feeling are you trying to create? Who are your clients and what are they trying to achieve? What are your client's clients trying to achieve? And what are you trying to achieve? With the answers to some of these questions will help us be more deliberate in our design and help us create an easier to use product. So I want to point out that just because we remove an element doesn't necessarily mean that it automatically makes it easier to use. And this reminds me of one time I got just really into decluttering and I got I just got rid of all of my summer clothes and <laughs> Like, the point wasn't to have to then go and buy a whole new summer wardrobe. It was to um, only keep those things that I really liked. But for some reason, I, I like lost that idea, and I just got rid of everything. So, um, <laughs> And we can end up doing that with our websites, too. Um, if, we, if we're not thinking about um, the purpose of an element or a piece of functionality, um, we might just end up making things worse. So how do we start implementing minimalist design? Um, because there are are so few elements in a minimalist design, having a solid understanding of basic design principles is extremely important. Without them, our designs may look empty and incomplete. Sorry, I thought I skipped one. Um, so the first design principle we need to know about to execute a minimalist design is white space. Uh, minimalism uses a lot of white space. And white space does not have to be white, contrary to its name. Um, it really just refers to the space around elements that don't contain any images or text. So if we're not used to using white space, it might feel like we're missing out on an opportunity. Um, we might feel like there's valuable real estate and we should put something there, but it's really not a missed opportunity. And in fact, it can create a sense of luxury um, and elegance. Um, take this store, for instance. This is um, an Hermes store, and there are really, really high-end uh, handbags and fashion apparel. They sell, like, their handbags are, like, $40,000. Um, so when you walk into a store like this, you can kind of just tell that the items are going to be more expensive. There's not a lot of clutter. There's We can see a lot of the floor. Um, so there's a lot of empty space. And it makes sense, right? Like, it looks expensive. And they're selling really expensive uh, items. And so imagine if it looked like this. And you go in there, and you find out that they're selling $40,000 handbags. Like, it just doesn't it doesn't add up. Um, so they use the same principles on their website too. Um, they use a lot of white space to draw the eye to like when I look at this I look 
right at the scarf and the belt there on the right and the shoes below that. So it helps to direct our eye to the most important elements, which in this case, I would say is the, the scarf and the belt. So the second design principle we should be aware of is typography. Because there are so few UI elements and um, in a minimalist design, the content ends up being the focus. And so we really can't ignore the importance of typography. So when we're considering fonts and the message that we want to convey with our website, we should be aware that and consider the fact that fonts have personalities and we should consider how those personalities either support our message or detract from it. In addition to the font's personality, we should also consider that uh, the font's weight, size, letter spacing, and line height also serve to create structure and hierarchy on a page and um, helps us to read it uh, easier. Um, the third design principle we should know about is color, contrast, and value. Minimalist design usually uses few colors, like a lot of whites and gray and black. So we can use color very deliberately to draw the attention to certain elements. Uh, for example, one bright yellow smiley in a sea of gray frownies um, makes your eye go right to the yellow object. And I'm not suggesting that this is a minimalist design, but I'm just trying to illustrate that we can use color to direct the eye to whatever it is we want uh, our visitors to look at. And we can do the same thing with contrast. Um, the greater the contrast, the more visual weight an element is going to have. And so the eye is going to go directly to the element with the most contrast. And again, same with value. Um, we can use value and different shades of a certain color to direct the eye to uh, the element we want people to look at. So using these three principles can help us execute a minimalist design more effectively because it gives us another way to direct the eye through our designs. The fourth design principle we should consider um, is the use of images and photos. And although minimalist design is really simple, it doesn't mean that we can't use images. Um, we should just be careful to choose images that um, follow the same style of minimalism. So images that have a lot of white space, um, maybe they use few colors. Um, but the point is to not choose images that would end up cluttering up our design. And lastly, we need to know about layout, alignment, and structure. These three things are really the backbone to where we place our content and the elements within our design. And if we don't get that right, it might end up looking messy. Oops. 
Um, so by considering layout, alignment, and structure, we help to highlight the most important elements within our design and to create that order and balance that we need to make our design um, easier to use. So um, our key takeaways here are minimalism is both a style and a mindset. Um, it came about in the 50s and has impacted many areas of art and design. Um, designers, bloggers, and website owners uh, should care about minimalist design because it helps us to be more purposeful. And we should start by finding out why we're designing something and who we're designing it for. And make choices based on those answers. And whether or not you like the style of uh, minimalism, I think being mindful is always a good thing and something that we should all strive for. So if you want to read more about minimalism, um, you can check out these articles. I'll tweet out my slides later today. So thank you, my name is Lauren Pittenger. I'm a designer and developer with LB Design and an instructor with the Women's Coding Collective. Hello. Hi. Thank you for the talk, first of all. Um, I find it easy to implement the uh, uh, minimalism into the original design or architecture of a site, but how do you either ensure or motivate people who will maintain the site to keep that philosophy along and not start cluttering the site thereafter? How do you... If I, under, if I heard your question right, how do you, um, when a project already exists, how do you prevent? No, uh, so for example, I come up with a design for a website. I sell the design, I implement the design, but then people will be maintaining the site and adding widget to WordPress and this kind of thing, right? So how, uh, um, basically my question is, how do you really make people understand the value of long-term minimalism? as opposed to today this is very decluttered and effective, but how do you get them to keep that mentality throughout the lifespan of the site? That's Without a, the knowledge of being a designer, basically. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> what? One yeah, when we all face. Um, I guess it just comes down to Education? Um, just explaining that we don't need a plugin for every little thing. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lauren. Hi. C can, can, can you show us an example of sites where uh, minimalism has helped, like perhaps a before and after, if you have something like that, or um, also possibly where it d did the opposite? Hmm. Um. I don't have an example of the top of my head right now. Um, but I will see if I can find you one. 
Thank you.